What's going on, everybody? Welcome into the Denver Sports Podcast. I'm Harrison Wynn. We're presented by Breckenridge Brewery, the official beer of DNVR. Uh, stop into the bar here, corner of Colfax in New York. Get a Christmas ale from Breck Brew for six bucks the entire month of January. That's our beer of the month uh, from Breckenridge Brewery. I think it goes away after that. So uh, get the Christmas ale while it's hot. Uh, on today's show, I got Miroslav Chuk coming on to talk about Dejan Milojevic, who tragically passed away a couple days ago. Legendary Serbian player who won multiple gold medals for his country. Uh, legendary player at the club level in Serbia as well. He played a couple years for Partizan, which is one of the two teams in Belgrade, and uh, he's looked at as an absolute legend over there. Uh, so I had Miroslav come on, and you probably know Miroslav from uh, Serbian Corner, the podcast he hosts on the weekends uh, on the DNVR Nuggets feed. He's been on our Nuggets show a lot. Um, but he is around the same age as Dayan, and he grew up rooting for him, watching him, and he has obviously a great perspective on who he was as a player and a coach. And... Um, Dayon suddenly passed away. It sounds like from a heart attack a couple days ago. He obviously is Serbian. He grew up there. He played at the club level, played for his country, and then coached Mega, which is the team Nikola Jokic played for for a few years. So uh, he coached Jokic and uh, still has a great relationship with him today. But he did tragically pass a couple days ago um, in Utah, in Salt Lake City. He's on the Golden State Warriors staff. He's an assistant coach there. And apparently they were out to a team dinner or something. And it was real sudden, real tragic event. And uh, the Warriors' last two games have been canceled. And if you've been on social media, you've seen just the outpouring of respect and uh, just support for Dayon and those around him from everybody in the NBA, not just Serbian people. But American guys who, you know, might have come across him uh, just once or twice, just talking about how good of a guy he was and uh, how much they respected him. So uh, Miroslav had a lot of great insight on who he was as a player, a coach, and obviously his relationship with Nikola Jokic, who um, if I know Nikola Jokic, I know he's taken this news really, really hard while the Nuggets are on the road here um, on a five-game road trip. Uh, so, yeah, without further ado, let's get to my chat with Miroslav. All right, my guest this week on the Denver Sports Podcast, you guys know him from Serbian Corner, the podcast he hosts on the DNVR network, Miroslav Chuk. And uh, Miroslav, thanks for joining me, man. Dobar dan, Harrison. Dobar dan. Um, obviously, you know, the news coming down a few days ago that they on uh, Milojevic, he passes at 46 years old. What's been just the mood over there um, from just what you've been able to soak in about how the country's taken this? Because this is this is obviously a huge loss. Yeah, I, I mentioned this briefly uh, uh, on the Wednesday, uh, Wednesday's, Wednesday's show on the DNBA show that, that Dan Milojevic wasn't really a celebrity. He was like like just a beloved person in in Serbia and it really shows uh, first of all we've heard that that he he you know had a heart attack and he is in a very serious condition and it felt at least to me like the time stopped at that point everybody was just you know uh trying to to scrap for some more information we could get of course we needed to to wait for the night in in America to end in order to get any kind of update there but yeah, from from the beginning we knew the situation was very serious because some of the basketball people uh, that were close to him uh, were giving away some, uh, uh, you know, uh, messages of hope. But you could have read uh, the tea leaves that everybody knew that it was extremely serious at that point, and of course everybody was uh scared of the of the worst possible outcome that unfortunately happened and even today even uh, even a day after it all happened the 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 news agencies everything is flawed by the by the reactions of of uh, his departure and everybody's quoting you know 
all the NBA franchises, all the important people from the America who who have shared their condolences with uh, uh, Diane's family and friends and everybody who was close to him. And it means a lot. It, it really means a lot. You, you, you could see from that uh, what kind of a globetrotter he really was, how beloved he was by everybody that was in contact with him. Over the last 24 hours on social media, obviously, you know, Serbian players, international players who were close with him, but even, you know, American guys showing just how, how much he meant to them. So it's it's hit a lot of people for sure. And um, I, I feel like it, it's, it's probably, you know, obviously hitting you guys over there a lot because Dayon, he wasn't just like a, a player who played for Serbia. He was kind of a hero over there. I mean, two gold medals for Serbia. He, he was MVP of the Adriatic League a couple times. He was a great player who did a lot of just like amazing stuff for the country. Um, from that angle, does it does it hurt a little more? Yeah, of course, because he, he was the part of that last golden generation. He, as you said, he won one gold medal with a, with a young team of of Yugoslavia, like under 22 team. They were 22 European and under in uh, yeah. 1998 in Italy, the European Championships. Yeah, together with Marko Jaric and Igor Rakotrevic. And then again in 2001 with, with the senior team, he won yeah. the gold medal, European gold medal. He was supposed to be on the Indianapolis 2002 team that won a gold medal as well, but he was injured, so he, he couldn't be the part of that team. Yeah, of course, he is one of the heroes and I think he is even more remembered by his amazing games in Euroleague and Adriatic League, where he dominated for for a number of years. As I said, he was he had like a five year stretch where he was the most dominant big man in Euroleague. He actually holds the second biggest game score in the history of of Euroleague and uh, the biggest game score in the history of Adriatic League. So yeah, that's it, it's we we remember him by his uh, great uh, uh, treats uh, on the basketball court. But then again, if you if you try to find any footage of him, and he was a really uh, kind guy who was always you know uh, giving up interviews to journalists all over, and he was he like, was like glad me, to, like like yeah. me. <laughs> that's right. So and. Have you ever seen him without a smile? No. He was just just smiles all over. Such a, such a bolt of positivity, and everybody could could felt that. No, I definitely got that impression too. I I had one real one on one interaction with him, and I did an interview with him about Nikola Jokic last season when the Warriors were in town. Super gracious, super enjoyable to chat with, and like you said. He always has a smile on his face, and I feel like that's another reason why you've you've seen this outpouring of um, support from just everybody. I, I want to get into like his relationship with Jokic and um, stuff with that, but all right, we'll get back to Miroslav in one second. Got to tell you guys about DraftKings Sportsbook first, though. If you're new to DraftKings, sign up with the code DNVR, and you can place a five dollar bet on any NHL game going on right now. You can bet on the abs, you can bet on whatever team you want and get $200 instantly in bonus bets. Uh, we know hockey games move fast, both DraftKings Sportsbook and official sports betting partner of the NHL. You can score faster than anything happening on the ice. That's this week. So you can bet $5, get $200 instantly in bonus bets. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app with code DNVR. New customers can bet just five bucks on the NHL. Get $200 instantly and bonus bets only on DraftKings Sportsbook with code DNVR. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.1800gambler.net. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY to 467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problems with gambling. Call 888-789-7777. Visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly on behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas. 21 plus age varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. Bonus bits expire 168 hours after assurance. See dkng.com slash hockey for eligibility 
and deposit restrictions, terms, and responsible gambling resources. Also, guys, if you're always on the move and you don't have time to cook, I don't. I know that. Check out Factor Meals. They show up on your doorstep. You pop them in the fridge, and then when you're ready to eat them, you put them in the microwave for two minutes. Then they are good to go. If you're trying to get your New Year's resolution going, if you're just looking to make a change and eat healthier, Factor Meals, they're ready to eat. They're healthy. You can choose from over 35 meals per week, including options like keto, calorie smart, vegan, and veggie, plus over 55 weekly add-ons as well. They taste great. Dude, they don't taste like your classic frozen meal that you put in the microwave from the supermarket. This is great stuff. Uh, go to factormeals.com slash DNVR50. You're going to get 50% off your order. 50% off your order at factormeals.com slash DNVR50. Go check it out. You spoke about this a little bit. He was the Serbian Charles Barkley. That, that's how people knew him. What kind of player uh, was he? And... um Growing up in Serbia, I mean, what do you remember just kind of rooting for this guy? What was that like? Yeah, well, first of all, uh, some of my buddies, uh, Dan was two years older than me. So a lot of my buddies who were um, uh, high-level basketball players in, in, in you know the, the young age, be they didn't become the professional basketball players, but they did play against... Uh, Dan in in the in the youth age and they all tell me that he was by far the strongest player they've ever played against he had an amazing uh, nose amazing uh, uh, feel for rebounding similar to Jokic really it's just yeah. that Nik Nikola is seven foot so it's it's kind of easier for him but uh, Dan was just a double double machine you you could count on on him every night to to get you. There's a there's a anecdote uh, told by Coach Pesic when he was uh, uh, Dan's coach in 2001. And if Team uh, Yugoslavia would struggle with rebounding, he would turn to the bench and say, because Dan was a bench guy, so why are we not rebounding? And Dan was like, get me in, coach, get me in. You know I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm going to get you some some rebounds. And of course he had a just a plethora of low post moves. He was extre he had a really 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 good uh footwork uh, for a big guy and and this is why he he managed to to dominate so much even uh even though he was uh, you know undersized. Also he was like 6 7 but he was like 250 260 pounds yeah. of pure muscle so he, he he was just a a unit well i was watching some of his highlights earlier today and yeah 67 to something like probably 230 240 and yeah like you said just a physical strong powerful player and um it's funny you can actually see like a little bit of Jokic's game there just from like the footwork and the IQ and the skill and um, just the understanding of basketball. And I don't know. I wonder if that's a reason why, why they bonded like, like they did. Yeah. I, I mentioned that on Wednesday, Dan always said that he had to specially prepare for every training, every uh, workout with Nikola because Nikola would uh, copy each move. He would show him, on the first try and perfectly so he needed to prepare for every workout thoroughly to to give him enough you know gems to be able to work uh, uh with later and and dan was was a great uh, post move uh, uh, uh post guy and nicola uh have everything that that dan had and more of course yeah so Dayan obviously plays for for serbia has some incredible moments for the country has incredible moments just playing uh, there for different clubs. He played for Partizan, of course. And then uh, three years after he retires, he becomes the coach at Mega. And um, I, I think I remember this from when we were over in Serbia a couple summers ago, but it was either you or, or somebody there was telling us how, like, when you're a great player in Serbia, sometimes you're kind of chosen to go into coaching and you're chosen to kind of take on that responsibility of coaching the next generation. And of course he goes to mega 
And ever since then, you know, they just start turning out NBA players. I think 11 players went to the NBA when he was coaching there. Is that, is that accurate? Like how, how does, how does a player like him become a coach? Um, and, and is that kind of like a pathway that is he's encouraged to go into? Yeah, that, that's true. Relko Bradovic, for instance, he was a point guard uh, on a national team. He wasn't a top level, but he wasn't the first point guard in a row. But uh, while he was a player, his coaches always knew that he would be the next coach. They knew and they, they would take him under their mantle. And as I said, most of the coaches are, are point, former point guards. So it's not not a very usual thing for a, for a big guy to to become a coach, and so that was kind of a surprising move. And Mishko Raznatovic actually said that on the on the hundred individual threads that when he appointed Dan to be the coach of Mega, he wasn't really a coach. He knew nothing about coaching, but he trusted in him because he knew how how eloquent he was and how. Uh, uh, how great with people he was and of course he had a great basketball knowledge and he believed in, in him and of course it was a process it was a eight year eight years process uh, on mega and uh, nicola uh, sorry dan was growing uh, together with his players every year and he was you know becoming a better and better coach every year yeah what do you think just his impact was on serbian basketball over the last you know, however many years, couple of decades, um, you know, from people watching him as a player to the people he affected as a coach, h- how would you just kind of put into words the impact he had on on Serbian basketball? Yeah, as I said, in his playing days, m- most, of, uh, uh, most of the things people remember him for was playing for Partizan Belgrade, was playing for Budućnost in Podgorica and Montenegro. You mm-hmm. know, he played for six strong years in those two in those two clubs, and then he he went abroad as well. Uh, people know him for his huge numbers and and incredible energy, but I I might actually say that he even had a bigger impression after he stopped playing and and became a coach and became a, a such a beloved figure because and it coincides with times changing time of you know social media and new kinds of media so everybody's more available uh for the for the audience to see them and and hear them talk you know in the 80s and the 90s you you couldn't really hear the basketball players speak it's just like like you know you got a couple of rows in the newspaper and that was that today you you could have heard what kind of a charismatic guy dan was and that of course made him even more popular uh, even even among you know fans of other teams and not only partisan belgrade but as i said he's considered an absolute legend of partisan belgrade even though he only played for two full seasons he actually returned to partisan in 2009 something like that at the end of his career but he mm-hmm. he had injuries on his both knees so he he had to retire early but it's similar actually to to bruce brown in denver you know bruce played for only one season and, and he will be f- forever remembered as the legend of denver nuggets it's similar with with dan milovic and parts Barry. only two seasons but amazing two seasons and you know he'll be remembered forever yeah no it's funny how that works man when when you're someplace for even a short amount of time and, and you do something special and you um you're just that type of person because like Bruce Brown could have been an asshole when he was in Denver and he probably wouldn't have been remembered the same way, even though he was a great player, but you got to be great on the court and you got to be a person that people can, can get behind off it as well. It's cool. Guys, if you're looking for tickets to concert shows and sporting events, check out the Game Time app. You can download the Game Time app, create an account right now. Use code DNVR for $20 off. $20 $20 off your first purchase with the Game Time app. Super easy. Just download the app, create an account, use code DNVR. You're going to get $20 off your first purchase to sporting event, nuggets, avs, what college, t- whatever you want. Uh, Game Time has it, concert shows as well. 
Uh, they have these great last minute price drops as well. Uh, they also have these zone deals where you pick the section. Game time picks the seats for an average of 18% savings. They're finding the best ways to get tickets to you at the best prices. Last minute tickets, easy to find and buy. Views from all seats in the venue on their app as well. So you can actually see where you'll be sitting. Uh, lowest price is guaranteed as well. Uh, so download the Game Time app if you're a new user. Create an account, use code DNVR for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply, but again, create an account, redeem code DNVR for $20 off. Also, shout out to Breckenridge Brewery, the official beer of DNVR, the presenting sponsor of this podcast as well. The beer of the month here in January at the DNVR bar, the Christmas Ale. I think it goes away after January as well. So uh, get it while it's hot. You can get it here, corner Colfax in York. DNVR bar if you're local, six bucks all month long. One of my favorites from Breck Brew. Uh, they also have tons of other types of beer as well. Avalanche Amber, Mile High City, the Broncos Country Pale Ale, the Fun Slinger, Good Company Hard Seltzer too. So you can stop in and get those here at the bar. If you're not local, check out breckbrew.com and their beer locator. Type in your zip code, shows you exactly where to get Breckenridge Brewery no matter where you are. So he coaches Jokic at Mega for, I think, two and a half years. And a lot of people credit him with being one of the first people to really realize that Jokic had, I'll call it star potential. Um, like people people thought he could be a good player, a good Euro, Euro League player, a good player in Europe. Um, but there were a couple people along the way who thought like, wow, this guy has that special something. And uh, Dayon was one of those guys. Um do you know anything about just the relationship that they had, Jokic and Dayon, uh, going back to you know when he was coaching Jokic, and maybe a little bit about the relationship they might have maintained over the years, or or why why in particular were those guys so close? Uh, I think the the biggest part here, and, and of course I'm just reading the tea leaves. I I think that it was it was Dan's personality that made them bond so strongly. I mean, you could have seen Darko Rajakovic, coach of Toronto Raptors, weeping after last night's game. You know, he wasn't as close with with uh, uh, with Dan as Nikola is. You know, he didn't coach him for two and a half seasons like he did with Nikola. And yeah. he still wept because, you know, he's he was just that kind of guy. That, that everybody loved. Same with, with everybody else you, you've heard there. Uh, so Dan was the body type of, of, of coach to uh, all of his players. And of course, that helps the bond uh, being stronger. He wasn't a dictator of sorts like most. Like European a true, coach. true players type of coach. Yeah, yeah. And that's, uh, we are so sorry. We are so sad in Serbia because he never got a chance to coach the national team because everybody kind of knew he would be the perfect coach for the national team because he had that great mix of people's skills and yeah. competence and authority at the same time and also modern thinking about basketball. Yeah, he so, has a great, I would think, a great mix of the old school mentality that he played with mixed with the new school approach that he coached with and was getting in the NBA as well. Exactly, because you we've had the, the, the case of Igor Kokoshkov, who is a very uh, well-respected assistant coach in the NBA, and he was a head coach for a short time in Phoenix Suns. I, Igor is, is fr from my hometown, so I, I have uh, strong feelings about him, but Igor never coached out, outside of the NBA. I mean, he... He had all of those years of experience there. Then he came to the national team of Serbia, Didn't, wasn't uh, uh, successful. Then he moved to Turkey, wasn't successful there. So he just came back to the NBA because that's the type of basketball he knows best, uh, knows to coach best. And, you know, Dan had both of those worlds. He was a, a, a coach in Europe for so many years. So this is, this is one of the reasons I... I was very um, uh, confident in, in, in his abilities to be a great national team coach. Mm -hmm. uh, I saw this quote from Jokic from 2022. Um, 
He's talking about Dayon here. I've known him for a long time, a perfect man, positive. When I grow up, I would like to be like Decky, which is his nickname over there. Yeah. yeah. I think that kind of sums it up right there. Like he kind of looked at him as a, a mentor type of figure. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, Decky was just the perfect uh, age uh, against Nikola. He was like 18 years older than Nikola. So he was older enough. Uh, for Nicola to really respect him and also young enough to to kind of be his buddy still so so uh, he, he he had that that sweet spot and of course the uh, nothing could have replaced his his charisma so yeah yeah I guess it's it, it's, it speaks uh, a lot about Decky. yeah what else should people out there know about this guy from from your perspective <sighs> I mean, it's hard to say. I've I've read to so many anecdotes about him in the in the last twenty four hours, and some of them are from you know some uh, um, uh, you know media that's not really rely, reliable. So you you should take it with a grain of salt. But at, at the at the very end, all the stories I've ever heard of him were just just uh, super positive and you know talking about him being such a such a great uh, energy guy such a positive uh, influence to everybody around him everybody just just loved him and and you will not hear that about you know every person i mean we all say nice things about people that are gone but in in case of of dan milovic that is not uh, hyperbole at all yeah i agree with that uh, Miroslav, thanks for coming on and uh, shedding some light on Dayan and uh, what he's meant to the basketball world, man. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. All right. Thanks to Miroslav for coming on and uh, shedding some light on who Dayan was as a person and a coach. Really enjoyed that chat. And um, yeah, that's going to do it for this episode of the Denver Sports Podcast. Guys, thanks for listening. If you're watching on YouTube, throw me a quick like. If you're listening to this as a podcast, leave a quick review. Really appreciate it. And um, thanks for tuning in. We'll be back next week with another guest. Talk to you then.